Mission is part of. Uh huh. We're recording too. That's also an important point of information. Um. So yeah, I'm from Praxis in Estonia, and we are part of the Euro Student Project team. For example, we organize these Euro Student Talks uh, webinars. And with me here, I have got Kaur Saarebu, whose work is in the spotlight today. Kaur, would you like to tell a few words about yourself too? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, hi, uh, I'm Kaur, and uh, I was brought in as an outside consultant to, um, to design and also to build the solution that we're looking at today. Um, I, I'm basically specialized on data visualizations and, uh, and I have quite extensive background in, um, in um, industry solutions. But uh, now more and more uh, in collaboration with Proxys, uh, I'm starting to do those interactive type of data visualizations. We also see one of the uh, latest works of Kaur very, very soon. As we're still waiting for some people to join, I thought that we could use this time to get a better idea of who you all are. And yeah, it might be a lot more interesting than just looking at my anxious face waiting for people. So yeah, Marlene has launched a poll and I would like to ask you all to indicate that what is your background? If you are a student representative, a policymaker, maybe from a ministry, or maybe you represent a higher education institution. And we might also have some researchers here from the field of higher education or, or elsewhere. Let's give it a few moments so that everyone can indicate their responses. I'm just uh, interrupting for a second that uh, I can see still people joining in in the waiting room. So maybe we can wait a bit more and then you can Elizabeth tell me when I should end the poll. Okay. So we're not sure if they can see it when they join. But let's look at the results of the people we have now. Let's see who, who we have here. How diverse is the, is the audience today? Uh -huh. Quite a lot of researchers, quite a lot of policy makers or, or ministry representatives. All right, uh, Kaur, you can also keep this in mind because we, we have some ideas about yeah. how different different stakeholders can uh, benefit from the country profiles tool that we are introducing today all right i'll also tell a few words about the euro student project before we get to today's topic in case there are people who may be for whom this is the first euro student event or, or your first point of contact with the uh, euro student uh, so it's a project uh, which collects and analyzes data on the social dimension of higher education, which is topics like student employment, housing, student social background, resources, but a lot more. And this is done in cooperation with national partners from all over Europe. And the latest round of Euro student covered data from uh, 26 countries, if I'm not mistaken. And the goal is to provide reliable and insightful and also usable cross-country comparisons and i hope that today marks a step forward in the usability and maybe even accessibility of your student data because we have launched a new interactive tool that replaces the previous static country profiles and i propose that we first talk about the idea behind the tool and then let's get to the practical aspects, some tips and instructions and feel free to type questions in the chat if you if you have any, we'll for sure take them in the end, but who knows, maybe already earlier. So first, Kaur, I wanted to ask you if you could tell us about the aim of the interactive country profiles. 
that we'll see a bit later. Um, yes, um, I might share a screen so I can show you some um, keywords to follow me better. And uh, so share um, and F5. Um, can you see the slides? Yep. Yeah. So um, I, um, when I first was introduced to the project, then um, that that was like the first question. So what should we do? And uh, I, I really tried to um, have some sort of a methodics how to approach that question. So uh, the first thing that we did was um, did like a, sort of a segmentation or like positioning in marketing terms of people who will be using it. So we used the well-known um, idea of bias versus trade uh, versus variance trade-off in data science, where you have um, at the one end you have um, information that's that's too varied to make any um, like really good conclusions about it, and at the other end, the the data is so um, so simple that it's it's biased and not really a representative. So, so uh, um, another way to think about it is at the variance end are usually researchers who want to be really specific and, uh, and uh, like um, avoid saying something that's untrue. And at the, at the other end, in a stereotypical way are leaders who don't have enough time to go into every detail, they want to be able to make some sort of decision and they, they often uh, represent data in a more biased way. So um, when we use that kind of framework, then we uh, understand that we would like to position that tool um, somewhere in the middle. So the average user, uh, when we thought about it, would be a policymaker. Uh, there's quite a few of you uh, today here as well, uh, and it's not aimed um, so much at the re researchers part, because um, another point that uh, I think I have somewhere here mentioned is uh, 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 the database. So we have another very good tool uh, that I was shown at the very beginning of the project is the Eurostudent database, which is much more uh, comprehensive and uh, there is a lot more information and you can also download the uh, data files. So um, this tool is, is um, aimed at one very specific user group and we tried to make it approachable so it would uh, cater uh, a wider audience, but, but if you, think about like the one stereotypical user, then it's, uh, it's a policymaker or, or some sort of a, let's say ministry advisor or someone like that. So uh, what we wanted to do, what the um, uh, current database doesn't offer is highlight points of interest. So to show you what to look for. And uh, I was told by Elizabeth that that was one of the things that at the last webinar people ask for. So how do I know where to look in that vast uh, database that you published? Yeah, yeah, we had this question about the differences, if, if there's any way to, to run maybe a chi-square test or, or where are the, um, the actual yeah. significant differences? Yeah, uh, and um, another point is that people can't really tell anything without context. So we, we are unable to say anything about absolute values, we always have to put them in, in some sort of context. Uh, so whatever tool we wanted to design uh, needed to highlight information in a contextual way. So, so no value was presented as is, it was always presented in context of other values. Um, so yeah, I already mentioned that. And uh, uh, the last idea what we had to keep in mind was that we wanted to be agnostic about what data means. So we didn't want to tell people that um, things are either good or bad. 
So uh, let's say like people with different um, political views might view the same data differently. So for example, um, let's say there are big public uh, support in uh, some of the countries uh, and uh, a liberal or um, let's say um, a socialist party in Estonia would say that it's it's very good, but uh, a more conservative party might say that, that that's too much. And we didn't really want to get into that debate. We wanted to present data and only show that it's different or it's similar to other countries. So right. back to you, Elizabeth. Yeah, I was, I was also wondering if you could tell us that what were these principles that you followed when you were developing the tool because there are endless options yeah. and you need to start from somewhere. Yeah, so that, that's the second question uh, that I have prepared uh, to answer is um, the first thing that I wanted to do was to understand the heuristic model of how people think about the question. So when we talk about country profiles, then we understand that people first want to choose the country uh, and then choose how to compare it, like the other countries that it should be compared to. Uh, and uh, then uh, the next thing would be to highlight what's important and, uh, and to see behind the data. So uh, I have used this before and it, it, this principle has never let me down. Uh, it's called Schneiderman's mantra. So it's overview first, then zoom and filter and details on demand. So I think this is a perfect encapsulation of what uh, a good dashboard should be. So it should be uh, capable of showing you overview of everything that might interest you. Then in just few clicks, you can zoom into the area that's most interesting to you and the details are never shown before you ask for them. Uh, so next one is uh, the infamous data to ink ratio. Uh, I think the term was coined by Eduard Tufte uh, and it, um, it's not that quantifiable um, or calculable, but I think it's, uh, it's a good like um, mental model or, or uh, a tool to use is to understand how much ink you use to convey meaning. So in universities, we often learn the way to present data um, in a not most efficient way. We um, use creed lines behind graphs, etc. cetera. Uh, but um, Dufta is, is well known for his visuals um, that use very minimal design. So only the parts of graph that convey meaning and everything else can be um, left on the side. Uh, and we um, came up with sort of a modification of the previous principle, uh, what I would call calculations per click. So um, that, that Elizabeth has told me before that was a selling point for them, uh, why they decided to go with that kind of solution is that um, uh, people often are capable of doing most of the analysis themselves if they have good data. And since we use the same data as the database, then uh, what, what really um, sets this solution apart is that when you choose a country or, or change the comparison group, uh, then all the calculations are, are done in real time. And uh, uh, we decided to um, to sort of a, um, like for every um, metric that we calculated, then uh, the, um, the data could consist of different types and different uh, uh, indicators. So there would be like, I think in, in the poll point of hundreds, if not thousands of cal uh, small calculations, done every time you change something. Uh, and last but not least is data integrity. Um, I think it's important to bring out is that um, whenever 
we had the decision whether to hide something or bring it out, for example, missing data um, in some countries, um, then we always chose uh, the idea that we have to show you uh, what's wrong. And um, it's, it's sort of a caveat, caveat that I, I do want to bring out is that we often had to make decisions whether to use some metric or not, or, or some, uh, some formula, then we always chose to use, even if it's not like a great match for the situation, but, um, but we wanted to show you in context what the numbers are and if the, um, the formula might not be like ideal for the situation, then, then, it, then it's not hidden, but it's shown to you and you can decide for yourself that that's, that's not really a good metric for that. And I'll show you that more when we do the demo part. Thank you. I, I think we could actually get to the demo part and I would ask you a few more questions, maybe more related to the background yes. and then we can get to the hands-on part two. I'm just trying to <laughs> avoid this sounding very uh, abstract to people because because we have seen the, the tool many times, but yes. most people here haven't yet because today is actually the launch and uh, right after the webinar, you could already go and, and discover it yourself too. All right, so now when you can see the actual tool and how it looks like and how you can all access it yourself too, I wanted to ask that because your student has very different outputs. We have the database, we launch multiple thematic reviews each round. Uh, recently also a scientific use file with microdata was released. And, uh, and actually, yeah, last, last webinar we talked about and introduced the, the new database too. Where do you all think that the national profiles or the country profiles tool fits in this? How does it complement the database, for example? Yeah, um, as I've mentioned before, I think it's um, sort of a insight where to look in the database. So um, the tool, uh, when we start showing it, then uh, every metric, every indicator is um, linked to the database. So whenever you find something that you're interested, then there's always like the link for the database. So for example, I'm interested in the entry age, then I can uh, bring it up in the database uh, with the selections that I have made before. So for example, if I change the comparison group, uh, then when I open the link again, then I only have the same countries that I, I previously have chosen. So uh, it should be seen as sort of a, uh, like a dashboard that you look at and when you find something, then you, you're expected to open it in database, maybe download the Excel file and maybe research it more or, or read more comments or more uh, information because not everything that's in database uh, is shown in here. In, in this visual, um, we prioritized uh, ease of use and, uh, and like um, simplicity over details. Right, right. Let's get to the hands-on part. And I thought that we could ask some help from our audience too. So as you can probably already see, then how it all works is that you always have a focus country and you can choose one or multiple countries to compare the focus country to. So my question to our audience is that which country would you be interested in focusing on? Could you type it in the chat? Let's see who is the fastest which countries we get first. Austria, right? Okay. <laughs> so, man. All right, but what we could do is that as we already got Austria here, and Austria was also the fastest here, uh, we could choose Austria as the focus country and maybe then let's take the next ones, uh, Soma, so Finland. And Netherlands. Netherlands and Slovenia. Do you, do you think oh, we should take more than three comparison countries? What do you think? Um, yeah, um, 
it, it's like one of the things that I discovered when when designing it and uh, and when it started to come to life was that um, if you compare different comparison groups, uh, then there aren't that many differences. So uh, as in with data analysis in general, the bigger the um, the sample, uh, the the smaller effect uh, another uh, item might have. So there isn't uh, uh, the more countries we add, uh, the less um, uh, effect the next country has on the sample. So right. there's quite a big difference between one or two or even three, but four, five, six, seven, then the, the effect on the uh, calculation gets, gets smaller and smaller. Mm. And right now, of course, this choice of countries is arbitrary in a way because we don't actually have any I would say theoretical background to compare Austria to Finland, Netherlands, and I think you added Slovenia and yeah, and Romania uh, next year. Are there anyone else who's from another country who's listening to this so we can add them as well? Like Ireland, France. I actually wonder if you're all from those countries. If this is the this is the audience that we've got in, in terms of yeah where you're from. Norway, Sweden, Estonia. So there's quite a few. Um, did I miss anyone? Well, they can, of course, later switch them up to and select another focus country too. So, okay, uh, there's quite a lot. So uh, let's see, uh, we have 11, uh, comparison countries and um, we have chosen Austria uh, as the country that we're interested in so uh, now all the countries uh, well, like all the indicators are colored on a five color scale from um, uh, about group average to uh, differs a lot and uh, you can just bring out the legend by, by clicking on the edge uh, and you can see. And um, I, when it's possible, then I usually use scales that are discrete and uh, doesn't have too many options because um, what I learned in, in psychology when I was in uni was that when people can't give names, uh, to the options, then they uh, tend to use not like the whole range, but only the ones that they're able to understand. And that that um, creates like problems in interpreting because not all options are as popular uh, by design. So let's see. Um, uh, what we can see is that Austria compared to those 11 countries uh, we have, for example, a higher education location. So that is average of two sub indicators. One of them is population. And as we can see, up to 100,000 people in the location, uh, Austria has those types of uh, higher education institutions uh, less than the comparison group. Uh, but uh, you have con uh, like uh, cities that are in, in the range of 100,000 to 300,000 people, 10% uh, more. And um, uh, the same you can see. So um, you can see that there are different uh, types of, of cities and, and you, um, uh, that, that's probably just geographical that what types of, of countries you have. And uh, capital versus non-capital, then you can see that uh, not in capital, so 51%. So it's quite average in terms of the absolute value, but uh, as you can see the, the small lines here, uh, then you can see that most countries that you chose to compare it to, they have a, a, like a lower percentage of uh, higher institutions in capital. 
uh, if you want more information about the metric uh, higher education in, in capital, then you can click the I button and you can see the label, the formula, how it was uh, calculated. Um, there, there are plans to um, add some more uh, interactive or, or more comprehensive uh, description of the formula so you can better understand how it's calculated uh, and the unit that's used for this metric. Uh, then you can see the response rate in Austria, 100% of the total sample uh, that participated in this year student version answer to this question in the comparison group of those 11 countries, on average, 99% of participants answered. And now, if we want to open that in database, uh, you can click that and see uh, the data in database opened. If there are methodical um, comments, uh, can you still see uh, the yes, euros? Yes, we can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you want to download it, then you can click download Excel, Excel and, and see it uh, in a more precise way or do some further analysis by yourself. Um, and so for a second, go back to the graph type of the higher education location that is on the right side there. Yes. I just wanted to uh, confirm because we have a lot of different graph types here when you check the different bubbles. So this one here, the thick line in the middle represents the country that you have focused on yes. always, right? And yes. the other lines then are the other countries that are in the comparison group. Yes. So the other countries um, are not important to really know the value of, but um, they're important to give context uh, how good or bad the value is. So how we got this um, uh, uh, significantly different color is that we can see that on average most countries uh, are um, the capital uh, the higher education institution is, is uh, less likely to be in a capital in those comparison countries right right all right could you show us some other maybe then more orangey bubbles as this, this is where yeah. the more uh, interesting difference let's, well. let's take for example this one so uh, entry age uh, this uh, is basically just a mean value compared in all those countries and uh, we uh, wanted to use uh, zero based graphs here because um, otherwise we could really flow out of proportions uh, like the actual differences between the countries. Could so, you maybe uh, zoom into the graph yes. if people got smaller screens, right? Okay, perfect. Thank so, um, so what we see here is that um, <clears throat> uh, it's different from the average. So there are quite a lot of values that are smaller than that. But if you look at the overall scale, it's 22.8 uh, years uh, from zero and 21.7, then I wouldn't say that any, uh, uh, well, I might be wrong, but I think that policymakers wouldn't interpret that, that it's, it's very, very different. So that's, that's again, uh, one of the aims of this tool is to show you something that's potentially interesting but um, the decision is up to you to really decide, is that something that I want to focus on or not? And uh, uh, at least uh, me myself, I, I would uh, not interpret that as, that as something interesting, but it was worth looking over that it, it's uh, a bit higher than the comparison group. All right. I think that we still have a lot of different graph types here, which might not be actually uh -huh. hidden under the orange bubbles. Could you show some graph types that we haven't seen yet, maybe? So there's one that's uh, probably going to get a bit better in, in coming days, but there is also, um, yeah, it has missing the country names here, but I wanted to add that in a few days, uh, is the uh, how to evaluate going abroad. So the, 
the locations or destination countries. And for that, I calculated the, um, um, like the average, um, let's see, let's check what's the, um, so the typicalness of, uh, yeah. Uh, so the um, countries were ranked according to the uh, popularity of um, the, the, the destination and then uh, each country was uh, taken five of its most uh, typical locations mm -hmm. and uh, sort of uh, calculated the score of uh, how typical the destination countries were. And uh, uh, that again might be like a metric that's, that's not that easy to interpret, but um, uh, I think when we just change maybe the countries, then we can see that, oh, check doesn't have the data. So that's another thing that probably should be shown is that if we don't have the data, uh, for example, you don't have people who have responded to that question uh, in the country, then uh, we're just going to show you missing data. And uh, then you can go to the link and you can see the destinations uh, and in this case, you had two links. There are percentages uh, mm -hmm. as well as the actual locations. But uh, our goal is only to show you that's something that might be different uh, in, in this uh, country that you're interested in. Uh, and uh, otherwise, I think we have covered like the four uh, craft types that we have. Uh, so there's uh, like the distribution where we calculate uh, uh, all the differences among the answers. Uh, let's see. So for example, housing distribution, uh, we calculate all the differences, then take the absolute value and then uh, summarize how uh, big the differences are. Uh, and uh, uh, that, that gives the color to that tool. Um, All right. Meanwhile, we actually have some questions also in the chat already sure, from the audience. Sure. Yasin is asking that how did you define significant and that which ones? I think what Yasin means is that which differences are significant. Um, currently, it is defined as uh, um, on like. Um, relative scale uh, of all the differences. Uh, like, um, for example, if um, the largest difference in some indicator uh, is 50% uh, difference, then that is uh, like normalized. So that that's like the biggest difference. And um, uh, that creates the scale. So uh, the biggest difference is considered uh, differs a lot uh, because it in in this frame of reference it's the big, biggest difference that you can have and uh, all the others are um, spaced uh, like on this normalized scale uh, in between mm. like the the average and uh, the most different so, so uh, depending, like for example, the entry age, depending on the scale uh, itself, then um, I would agree that it's not that different. But in terms of in terms of that reference point where you yeah. you have the values really close together, then that's uh, one of the most extreme values that you have. All right. And the other question that we have was about if it's possible to see the deviations, for example, whether comparison is limited to, to a different question or a focus group. I think you actually once already showed this under the information box. Uh, that this leads us to the database, and this is then it's a database where oh, we can okay. see the deviations. Yeah. yeah. So so you can see the um, uh, calculated difference in uh, like the items that the indicator have. 
but uh, you can't see the uh, sum of those currently. And uh, if you want to calculate it or, or see it, uh, uh, like the number- For different focus that, group? Uh, I mean, like uh, the number that uh, this is based on, like the average or, or the, the current country, uh, those numbers are, are not shown in this UI. But if you want to see the actual numbers and analyze them in further detail, then I would recommend opening the database. And here you can see like all the numbers and, uh, and the table, um, you can open it in Excel, et cetera. But yeah, actually then the deviations, if the question was worded differently or, or if some focus groups are missing, then this is also there in the database, right? Which yes. actually uh, showed in the beginning, yeah, if you go down here to the country specific information. Yeah, so, so um, my focus when designing this tool uh, was not to show everything, but to only show where to look. And it was always designed uh, with the database in mind. So database has all the information that uh, uh, can be analyzed. Uh, I have only created the tool to do, find the differences in few clicks and then look further into it. So you can see that, for example, primary role is, is quite an average, then you might skip that and not be as interested in that number uh, as you are in, in let's say, uh, parents' education. And uh, uh, when you consider that uh, the education that's different in, in um, your current country is something you're interested in, then I expect you to go to the link. All right. We have another question which asks about actually this particular view now that if you check the housing satisfaction now at this Austrian view, then there's no ring around it. Why? Yes. That? So uh, that is uh, part of the like I mentioned data integrity, I didn't want to hide any information that's uh, missing. Uh, I wanted to show you, uh, show to the user that that's something that you don't have. So mm. as we can see, uh, when we click that open, then we have zero responses from, um, from this country. So you mm -hmm. can't really say anything about it, but it's still important to show user the, um, that it's missing. And as you can see, Austria uh, is missing in database as well. All right. You have already mentioned some things that you might tweak a bit or that are upcoming developments. Could you tell us more yes, about what kind uh, of extra features or, or updates can we still expect? Yeah. So um, as the calculation might be a bit hard to follow, then uh, to make it more clear, I've decided uh, with Praxis that uh, I should uh, uh, like visualize the calculation steps uh, under the formula idea. So currently it's only a, a descript descriptive sentence here, but I think it should be something uh, more visual. So you can see uh, how the data is picked, how it's calculated, how it's summarized. Uh, and another important thing uh, is, um, is a sort of a print version where I would yeah. um, probably um, create something uh, where you can uh, print it out on a, on a larger scale. So for example, choose more than one uh, indicator from here how exactly it's going to be laid out, I don't know at the moment, but I think it's going to come within the next month where you can uh, create some sort of um, a print version uh, and, uh, and then just use the regular uh, like printing option that browser has right, right. Uh, and print it out uh, and, and choose maybe uh even the paper size uh, so it might be different for let's say uh, a3 and a2 might have like a different number of indicators that are um like currently open 
So in, in that way, people could actually create this, our previous version of the static country profiles out yes. of it in a way. And yes. Uh, and uh, one thing that I think I didn't mention before is let's take something where we have data. Um, so during lectures, so for example, lecture free period. Um, so uh, during lectures, um, let's say I want to share that view, then I can uh, take the link here uh, and send it to someone and it will open. Uh, I currently have missing the um, comparison group. I will fix that soon, but uh, it will uh, like share the same view. So you can share the, the specific thing that you're interested in uh, with and others. The other person well. will get the same view then. And then uh, one yes. has to. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Is there anything else, some elements that you think that we have? missed today that you haven't managed to show us but you find very interesting mm. uh, it's also um, uh, built so that it's um, uh, uh, responsive uh, in design so if you have like some sort of a smaller screen let's say pixel 2 no what's what's very small <laughs> Uh, Should yes. we ask our audience to to uh, type their phone models? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, so uh, yeah, I might show the mobile version as well. So when you open it, it opens on top of it, and then uh, there is a small reminder that uh, to close it, you have to click on the bubble. So got it, um, and now. Uh, 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 at least from a building perspective, building it responsive is uh, more of a challenge than to uh, build it only for, for desktop only. So it fits perfectly on smaller screens and uh, you can go through. And there are probably uh, quite a lot of small tweaks and bug fixes that, that are coming in, in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. such as maybe adding a, a swipe gesture that you don't have to uh, click open and, and close every time you want to see uh, other uh, visuals. Um, there might be some tweaks to the, um, uh, the indicators now that it's published. Uh, when we get feedback, we might uh, add something that's in the database and not here. Uh, and uh, and maybe uh, take uh, away some metric that's not really informative uh, and replace it with something else. But mm -hmm. when we when we started designing it, then the principle how we chose what to show was basically if it's possible to show, then we want to show it uh, even if the data is is not really really good at that um, specific indicator. All right. I see that in the chat, we have a question which specifies that if we can print these outputs. So if I understood correctly, then right now we can't, but this is a feature that we can expect soon. Uh, yes. So um, currently, I think uh, when we want to print that, then it's, it's not really, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't really work for, for printing, but I want to make uh, changes so that when you use the typical printing function of browser, then it's nicely based and, and everything is, uh, is uh, like it has all the colors and, and doesn't have any, any bugs. Right, right. But just to specify then to our audience too, that, that all these uh, future features and, and printing features, for example, this will be added and then we will communicate it uh, certainly on Eurostudent Twitter, for example. But what we have shown you today, this is live and on country profiles that Eurostudent.eu, you can go and check it out already. Uh, there will be access straight from the Eurostudent website too. I believe it's not there yet, but, but the profiles are live and, and now or after the webinar, feel free to go and, and compare all the countries to each other. 
uh, I wanted to ask if there are any other questions from the audience, something that's unclear that you were wondering still. Uh, that's a very good question. I, I saw that someone asked about the uh, other versions. Uh, that was one of the technical um, technical um, specifications of the project. So everything was built, uh, keeping in mind that we have previous versions and coming versions. So we haven't uh, decided if we want to show the previous versions because they are not um, uh, conducted in a way that the data is uh, necessarily comparable between the version five, six, and seven, but uh, it has to uh, be comparable to next versions. And then there's probably going to be a simple button that you can uh, compare it in, in time reference as well. So how the country has changed over time. I was cutting off for a second, but I, I see you answered another question. Yeah. So could we imagine to include a warning in the information chat, such as a deviation has been indicated in this and that country? Uh, I'm not really yeah. sure I understand the question. So I think the question means that, uh, like you showed that in the database, you can go and check if the country asked any question differently or or um yeah so that oh. this can be checked in, that if we would like to indicate a warning of this already in the country profiles uh, i remember like there was for a example here uh like the right. response option other was not offered in mm -hmm. czech republic um i have to talk to you george who's uh, like the uh, maintainer of the database uh, because I think I don't currently have uh, have the data uh, when we discussed it in consortium then I think we agreed that it's not that uh, important in this tool so um, I, I understand the need for some sort of a, a like an asterisk or something to show you that that you shouldn't interpret it without looking into the database. But mm. um, at the same time, uh, I would expect people to always uh, go and check the data in the database when they find something that's interesting. So if you find something that's really different, then I don't expect you to stay here and just interpret that graph uh, but to see that, okay, that's something that I want to look into and then go uh, still go into the database and, and open it. All right, so the words from the developer himself are that calling us all for um, paying attention to details and, uh, and the database and not take too many shortcuts, even though the tool actually uh, is taking these shortcuts for us. Uh, I, I say um, I might write it down and uh, just discuss it with with George. If there is a simple way to just indicate that there are comments or or give the comments somewhere here, um, and maybe I don't know um, add some sort of a visual element. I don't know at the moment what it should be. Then, then we we can discuss it, and and uh, most certainly, if you do have other suggestions like that, then I'm interested in in hearing them. So you can uh, uh, forward them uh, uh, via proxies from Elizabeth or or Eva or whoever uh, whoever is uh, is um... knows your email, right? Yes, exactly. So uh, and probably other your student members as well. Uh, whatever way the information gets uh, to me, uh, then it's it's uh, it's good, and uh, and uh, since I'm still working on some of the features such as printing, then uh, I'm very 
open to to making any small changes that would make your life easier i'm also adding my email to the box here because elsin already also asked whom we should send the feedback to so for example my own email and then that will for sure get to go to and we can we can discuss the questions and feedback um I think that if there are no more questions, we could wrap it up for today so that people could go and uh, and explore around the tool. So thank you, Kaur, for not only on the work uh, on the profiles, but also for coming today and guiding us through the tool. So yes. like I said before, it is available on countryprofiles.eurostudent.eu. Just a second, I'll also add the Seems that Elizabeth's connection is playing some nasty games. <laughs> but hopefully she will be back for the last minute. Gaur, was there anything else you wanted to add as the last word for wrapping up? Uh, not, not really. Uh, uh, just... Uh... Uh, I hope you enjoy it and uh, and uh, have uh, some use for it. Uh, I know that I definitely learned quite quite a lot looking at the Eurostudent data for for a few months. And uh, and um, yeah, uh, if you have any suggestions, again, uh, please forward them uh, to I me. Don't... I don't know, Gaur, if you saw that comment, but it was also commented here that maybe a solution could also be to change the color of the country tab. They are all blue at the bottom of the page at the moment, uh, but if you change it in the database itself, well, where there is a deviation of any kind. It was uh, obvious comment some minutes ago, a minute ago in the chat. Yeah. They're all blue uh well um i don't really i don't really understand the comment like they're all blue at the bottom of the page do you mean those the here? country tab uh -huh. so it's in the database actually where they are all uh, blue then when you go down to the deviations yeah. there uh -huh, then that this might be a twink to the oh, database okay. that all right then okay. this could be something that we could change in a database instead right? okay uh that's that, also a good that's idea not up to me to maintain but uh, i definitely going to forward that idea to george uh, who who is able to change things in in uh, in database uh, i think it's it's a pretty good idea because at the moment, yeah, you have to click through all of them to see if there are any comments. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think, uh, Elizabeth, you can also collect all the yeah. uh, ideas for, for the database as well. Yeah, that's no, that's no problem. And sorry for cutting off before I, I see that Madeleine took over the, the closing words. Did you mention about the next webinar already not yet i told them that i i would be happy if you can come back for wrapping it up <laughs> but yes we can already launch the date of the next uh, eurostudent talks webinar and it will be in the end of uh, october it's 28th of october and we will talk about internships then so thank you everyone tuned. for coming thanks everyone